Hey everyone, this is Lucky70X, welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. In the last episode, we went underwater, and now we are at the Ocean Temple, the third dungeon, and we are going to start it and kick some ass in it, so all it's going to be, whoa! Two treasures in the first two pots. That's pretty up, including bee larvae, which is one of the ones I actually needed to get, um... So really glad, that's, that's a great way to start off, there we go! Um, that was not actually intentional, so, um... That's just pretty awesome. So we got some sub larva. Um, is that the only? Com I think it's the only common treasure we haven't seen yet. And um, one of the ones, as you guys have seen before, that I need to get to get the wooden train. I'm trying to complete the wooden train first, just so I can have the extra heart on my train set. So we might actually be completing that soon. That's gonna be pretty cool. So uh, glad for that to happen. Now, as you can see, there's little stones here that have some odd messages. The fourth one's above here. The third one's above here. I also use some of these uh, new ones, just use your boomerangs, they're very similar to the frost ones, I mean, they pretty much act the same way, so... They're just electric instead of ice, because we're in the water instead of in the ice, although... I guess electric, I guess electric and water kind of makes sense, I mean, they tend to, most Zelda games tend to have sort of mix electricity with their water levels, I mean, think about Majora's Mask, uh, think about, there's arrows, what the hell? Um, think about uh, Ocarina of Time and Jabu Jabu with all the electric um, little jellyfish things. But we have one of these statues of awakening. Um, I did mark, as you can see, I did mark the uh, little arrow of the, the numbers. They will be important later. Um, it will actually come into play later in the dungeon, not currently at the moment. This dungeon does do a lot of uh, remembering patterns and numbers on one floor to use it on a different floor. So, sort of a bit of a thing. So here's two treasures that we're going to see uh, that we're going to need to get later. That's going to be pretty cool. Now this dungeon... Might be one of my favorite dungeons in the game. I'm not sure if it's my favorite. I'm, I need to remember the other dungeons a bit more, but this is definitely up there on a really to be a really awesome dungeon because it's pretty Indiana Jones theme. As you can saw, we had little arrow traps before. We had some boulders before. Um, once you see the dungeon item, you're gonna definitely see this is blatantly like Indiana Jones themed dungeon. Um, there's really nothing here that was useless, but uh, if, you, if you saw if you saw on the map, there was actually another door. If you check over here, there's actually a hidden crack here. So we're gonna go ahead and blow this shit up as I just sort of derp around waiting for the bomb to explode. It explode, darn it, bomb! Thank you. Come again. And there's also really nothing over here because these little things we can't handle it. We don't have the equipment to handle them. As you can see, doing this does nothing. If you walk into it, you actually take damage because they're thorns. I guess that makes sense. Although how you take that much damage from a thorn, I don't know. It's like like purposely impaling yourself. He's just like, whoa! I'm gonna stab myself with this thorn. But anyway, uh, hold your shield over here so you don't get hit by the arrows and get knocked off the thing. God damn it! All right, let's try this again. So just uh, phase it so you can. Uh, Use your shield to take the blow instead of you. That's why you have a shield. That's why we got ourselves our shield of antiquity. And as you see, these ones are shooting you. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these in the wrong order because another Indiana Jones theme thing is these things tend to be pretty booby trapped. Um, so there's, you actually encounter booby traps in this game that will uh, hurt you if you do the wrong thing in the puzzle. So uh, kind of interesting. I mean, like you know, there's little booby traps, there's arrows, there's boulders. It's definitely Indiana Jones themed temple. I love it for that though, because you know, more dungeons, sh more Zelda dungeons should have crazy booby trap shenanigans. I mean, they're dungeons, they're temples. They, they make sense that they should be booby. What the hell am I doing in this episode? My goodness. Anyways, um, about that outburst. That was actually pretty funny. Uh, but yeah. So as you can see, the arrow traps disarm themselves once you get the order right. Obviously, the order is what we saw below. Um, with the numbers we saw below. I just memorized it there, but if you don't remember it, you know, just go back to your map, go to the first floor, you'll see it, and god damn it, how many pits am I gonna fall into this episode? As you can see, this doesn't really work, as the pit opens up there and you can't get out, so what you need to do is actually hit the boomerang. Now you'll be wondering, what does that, exactly does this accomplish? Well, remember the boulders on the first floor? Um, this will actually change the pattern of the boulders on the first floor, because we're on the second floor, so it makes sense, you know, they're dropping down onto the first floor from here. And now that they're like that, well, actually, um, you'll see in a second, we'll be actually be able to get through that section and move off the dungeon. So, pretty cool. Um, little early, little, I guess, trap section to sort of introduce this sort of flavor of this temple. And about those little cracked uh, wall areas, and the treasure, by the way, that is just blatantly not here, we'll be coming back for this um, pr and just a little bit in order to get those ones. So, don't worry about missing that at the moment. See, so, yeah, as you can see... The boulders are just sort of falling down into infinite pitness, so we can continue onwards. Pitness. What kind of word is that? That's like pitness. It reminds me of Pit, like, you know, the character Pit, you know, like from Smash Brothers slash Kid Icarus Pit. It's like pitness. It's like it's like Pit. The fight is on! And all those annoying catchphrases he says in Brawl, your stupid taunts are annoying, dude. 
Um, but that's another one of these little, um, little, what, whatever they're called, the little sleeping statues. I don't remember what they're called. I don't really care. Um, so we're gonna wake them up and see what kind of, I'm just, they're, they're like the compass, like I said. They're the compass of this area. So, um, you just need, you know, there'll be a couple treasure chests, blah, blah, blah. We'll pay you some money, because I can spread the money for now. And there's just one down there. We'll be able to pick that up later. Um, as you can see, we've seen those sort of little stick things before that we've, uh, I, I, I think I've sort of uh, shown those off a little bit here, but um, you see, we've seen this before. This is going to be the temple where we finally get an item in order to handle those things. So that's always good. Yeah, those stick things right there. That's what, I'm, that's what I was talking about. And uh, yeah, so the dungeon item will be about doing that. I guess the dungeon item in this game is supposed to be kind of like the hookshot-ish sort of thing in this game. Um, that's sort of my interpretation of it. Um, but actually, we're going to be getting quite soon because we have a middle boss, and he has a whip. Oh, good and don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Oh my god, we're fighting Ned Jones. Um, and he kind of latches onto you up, and that actually makes this fight interesting, because he will basically, if you try to run away, he'll smack you. If you try to come close to hit him, he will pull you away, and you're like, okay, how do I do this? Well, the way you actually have to fight him is, and also you can't use any of our items while you're whipped. You have to, you have to actually let him pull you in to attack you, and then hit him first. And I tried, you want to try to hit him if you're boomerang to get him to out of the way. Um, but basically, you want to as he pulls you and you want to lunge up your sword and hit him before he hits you, which is kind of a bit tricky if the timing, but if you get the timing right, you actually can um, hit him, get a few hits in, and make him back off. And then if you can hit him for the boomerang, you'll actually be able to stun him. I get to, oh, he hit my boomerang back. That's cheating. You're not allowed to do that. But there we go. You manage to dodge the whip and hit the boomerang, and that's a good way to hit, stun him and finish him off. So, pretty nice. And interesting enough, actually, this is actually a little preview for our dungeon item, which is going to be right here in this treasure chest after we take like a good 50 minutes to open four different doors. Yeah, is this necessary? I don't know, but apparently that's what we have to deal with right now. So, all the doors open, plenty of pathways to choose from right now, but not really because only one of them really is one we can go on. But here we go, we got the dungeon and we actually get the guy's whip, which is pretty legit. And the whip is probably my favorite item, like, ever, because this item is awesome. Um. Basically, you just point the little thing to activate the item as usual, and then you just point a location, like a whip there, as long as it's not too far away, it does have a, have a range. It has a pretty ridiculously big range, but it does have a range. Um, you can also use the whip to latch onto these little stick things and swing across them like Indiana Jones or any other whip variant superhero. I guess like Alucard from Castlevania. That's how you say his name. That's just, I don't know anything about Castlevania. Spoilers, well not since spoilers, but um, trivia on me I suppose. I've never played a Castlevania game. Yeah, I've just never played. It's like, I mean I've played Mega Man games before, but I don't really, I haven't really played barely any of them. Like Mega Man and Castlevania are just two series I just really haven't played much. Castlevania is Capcom, right? So I guess maybe I just have a thing against Capcom, but I love Phoenix Wright, so I don't know. Um, but as you can see, those whips also... Hey, we got more bee larva. That's pretty cool. Um, but uh, those, um, the whip will allow us to deal with the thorn things here by basically... Um, basically, what the whip does is you can either attack enemies with it, which is really good at attacking enemies. You can use it to grab these stick things and travel. You can grab other things, or you can grab other things like this and pull them out. Or grab those thorns and pull them out. And so it's a very multi purpose item, and that's pretty cool. So those switches are activated with the whip. And they'll cause the churches to appear way up there. Luckily, we need to actually head over there and now, because as you can see, we are actually able to do stuff with um, those little cracked wall rooms up there. So we'll go ahead and grab the uh, dark pearl, pearl loop we got in here. That's not too bad. We've already had a couple of those before, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. But, you know, we'll, we'll just take whatever we can get. Um, and in here. Uh, sorry about the pause there, I just randomly coughed my lung out. Uh, yeah, I'm still slightly, my voice is still slightly recovering. It's to the point where it's good enough, as you have heard from this recording and the one before it. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And probably doing multiple recordings on the road to try to catch up is not helping. But, um, so yeah, you activate that the boomerang and you still have to get rid of the thorns and we'll be able to go over here. This whole process actually is only, um, you don't actually get anything from this, any special treasures or anything. This is actually to get the stamp station, although the stamp station is obviously a very useful thing to get, but now they're actually starting to hide the stamp stations pretty decently, so be careful about that. They're actually, you know, getting clever of activating those. And I think you'll be able to see it there. Yeah, you can see right there. The stamp station is right there. So how we get over there is we actually need to whip ourselves onto the platform here. Um, now you can hold the whip in, he'll actually swing back and forth, so you can also just, you know, hold the whip button in, and you'll just, you know, hold the whip on, on the little stick thing, and you'll be able to, you know, do it like that. And of course, to whip the thing, you just, you know, you just point where you're aiming your whip, and he'll just, uh, hook onto it automatically, so that's how it works. 
barely make it onto that platform. That was pretty close. Um, no, no, get closer. There we go. All right, so just whip ourselves across like a badass. I mean, come on. Whip is just so cool. It's just so cool to be like you know whipping yourself across gaps like that. I think it's definitely cooler than the hook shot. I mean, at this point, I mean, yeah, the hook shot's pretty cool, but it's like been like every Zelda game in some sort of variation. So it's nice to see something different, I guess, and something you know a little more unique. And I mean, the whip is definitely one of my favorite things about this game for sure. So. That alone makes me love this temple just a ton. And I mean, the whip, like I said, Indiana Jones temple. What does Indiana Jones use? A whip. Makes sense. So here we are on, far, uh, here we are on floor of three. Four, three, eight. I can't talk. Um, and we're going to pick... Um, well, this isn't actually the direction we should be going in, but I'm just going to go over here first because there's actually a treasure over here and I can't really make it. So I'm going to hold in here and I'm just going to wait for the thing to come back and swing back and forth. Whee! This is fun! Not really. Go on. Anyways, after a slight little bit of a delay there, we shall be able to get this treasure chest, and inside this treasure chest shall be a white pearl loop. Hey, uh, that's actually pretty good. We don't actually have one of those, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm checking my collection, and yes, yeah, the first one we've gotten from those, and that's actually really good, because white pearl loops are one of the items you need a lot of in order to get um, the best train set in the game. So really good that I'm finally getting one of those. I think also we're going to need one for a wooden train set, so... Um, it's really good that we've been getting those. Now that we have the whip, we can actually damage these things. They do... I think it does about half the damage the sword does. So you actually have to hit these things twice instead of once, but, I mean... It's still a very nice long way, range way to get it. I mean, you don't have to hit things with, you don't have to hit things with the boomerang now, and then hit, hit them with your sword afterwards. You can just kill them outright with an actual item, so... That's not a bad thing. I mean, it definitely works. I, that's I mean, another very good use of the whip, is killing those guys. So, there you go right there. Now, we can't go down, as you can see, quite yet, so we're actually going to be heading up, or not up, we're going to be heading left to the west, and then we're going to be heading to the fourth floor from there. Yeah, this dungeon has a ton of floors. It has, like, I want to say six floors, I think is what it is. It's like six or seven floors. It's a ridiculously high number, so definitely this is where the, the dungeons actually do start getting a bit along. If I haven't mentioned it already, this dungeon is going to be two videos. Um, if it's not already obvious by the fact that we just started this floor and there's like, what, a minute, two minutes left in the video? Um, and I will be uploading the book from the same day, though, as part of, like, me catching up from all the videos I missed. But, um, if you've been watching, if you're watching this video in the future, this information does not apply to you whatsoever. So, here's another one of those cool, uh, trap sections, actually, um, as the little, uh, hint gave us a while ago, they actually pulled the one that's the long, the farthest way away, which is obviously the one on the right. But I'm like, what the hell, let's show off the traps anyway. So we have a, bo a boulder trap, and we have an arrow trap. So, don't want to be touching any of those. Those are not exactly good things to be doing. So we want to get the one that's actually correct, which is this one. Actually, get a little closer here. Get closer, Link. Now, those little clown statue things, those little clown switches, or I don't know if they're clown switches. They, they look like, they're like little clown. They look like clowns or fish or something. They always really, they're just really freaking creepy statues. Um, you'll see even later on, um, that they get even creepier than this, but you know, you're pulling out their tongues with your whip. Oh, this one's right here. Look, look at that thing. He's just sitting there, like, um, nom nom, I want my sword in my mouth. Which is just kind of creepy. So, the way you do that is you take the sword out of one, you put it in the other in order to activate it. So, um, you'll be seeing a lot of these whip switches now in the future. Um, there's gonna be a lot of transferring the swords back and forth between them. Um, so, they're kind of a bit creepy, in my opinion, those little switches. Especially the ones that go om nom nom. Those ones are just sort of weird. I, I don't know. They're little they're a little sketchy, those little switches. But, you know, it works. We got ourselves a small key now, so we're going to head up to the fourth floor this way. I mean, this dungeon's kind of a maze, but it's not... It is somewhat straightforward anyways. Um, I guess the, the, the second half of it, which, um, you know, we're getting to almost... We're getting pretty close. This is also a little shortcut if you ever wanted to go back for some reason. I can't really think of any reason why you'd ever want to go back. But hey, we got another whip section, so that's always pretty cool. Um, they're going to get more complicated than this, obviously. Um, and we're going to get ourselves a couple hearts, because in here is another one of those dungeon fighting rooms. Or not dungeon, well, those rooms in the dungeons with the fight new enemies. Now, these are uh, little, I don't know, they're like helmeted choo-choos, and you just whip their helmets off, and you whip them back at them. You can beat them up with their own helmet, and that is awesome. And because it's so awesome, I'm ending the episode here. So this is Lucky70X. In the next episode, we finish this, this dungeon with more whip action. See you next time.